There are so many great ways teachers use technology in the classroom. So this list was created to save you some headache in avoiding these five common mistakes that I see. Also, be sure to stick around for number five because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get some hate for this recommendation I make, but I promise it's for your own good. All right, let's do it. The first one is quick and easy. So picture this. You have this beautiful lesson and activity you've designed on your laptop, and you're now ready to start the lesson with your students. You have your students get their iPads out, you direct them to the start of the opening activity, and it doesn't work. The activity you prepared works on your teacher laptop, but not on the student iPads. This mistake is not checking the student's device compatibility with the tool you have planned to use for the activity. It happens more often than you think, and it's super frustrating. So it may work perfectly on your teacher computer, but if it doesn't work on the student devices, then we've wasted a whole lot of time preparing it and class time trying to make it work. It may also be that it works on the student iPads, uh, but it might need an app. Or I've also seen where the website you want to use is open for teachers and when you prepare your activity and create that uh, activity for students to use and you think all is fine and well, but then your students go to that website and it's blocked for student use, that can be super frustrating too. So number one, make sure that whatever devices your students have, the tool and the website work on those devices and confirm beforehand that the device doesn't need a specific app or software needed prior to the lesson. Number two is assuming students are digital natives. Nowadays, students are exposed and immersed in technology at really such a young age, but we cannot assume that they know how to use technology. We must extend just as much patience to them as we do when we explain anything new for the first time. We need to give them direct and specific instruction on how to use a technology tool that you are introducing and your expectation of that tool. So also you may find that students know how to use specific tools or complete projects using technology, but they formed bad habits. I see this especially with keyboarding skills. So we must remember that yes, students have been exposed to technology for a while now, uh, but still, they must be taught how to utilize technology academically and know the classroom expectations. You and your students will have a better experience with technology when they are trained on how to use the classroom technology and you provide those clear expectations for tech use in your classroom. Number three is using a tool that doesn't align with classroom intention or just flat out doesn't support the lesson. So technology is not always the answer. Wait, did she just say that? Yeah, I did. And I'm always the first to say that technology is not always the answer. It can be a great resource when it's aligned with the lesson objectives and it supports student engagement and achievement. Technology gets commonly overused for many lessons where paper and pencil or a book or a group activity, uh, they work just as well if not better sometimes, but we feel we need to use technology in each lesson or we want to excite the students more. Most often it's not about excitement. It's about which tool we can best use to reach our students, which is most effective. Do not change an effective engaging lesson just to use technology for the sake of using it or whatever bells and whistles there are on it. So number three goes along with number two, where we're thinking students already know how to use this new technology. So we'll just throw it in there because they'll learn it quickly, right? We don't wanna just add it in for the fun of it. The time it takes to train students on using the tool properly must be worth the lost class time it takes to train and troubleshoot because our class time, it's precious and it's limited sometimes. So number three, we are not using every ed tech tool under the sun. We are finding those ones that really enhance our lessons and are worth spending class time to train students on how to properly use. Number four is using too many sites that require student logins. There are so many account names and so many passwords to remember. It's overwhelming for you 
And if it's overwhelming for you, then you know it's overwhelming for your students. This also dips into a student privacy issue uh, where you have to vet each website you use on the privacy practices of student information when they create new accounts. So I love sites where you just sign in using their Google accounts or you connect by code. No one needs to remember accounts and nobody needs to remember those passwords. So if you are a Google school or your students have Microsoft accounts, you can make this one of the requirements of your classroom tools that you choose to use in your classroom. So if students need an account, but they don't offer the Google sign-in option or the Microsoft sign-in option, you don't have to use it. You can go find another tool. It can be that simple. If this sounds too restrictive, it may not be for you, but I do know that this is now one of the first things I check. Can my students connect by code or sign in with their Google accounts? If they can't, I move on to another tool. It's just one of the rules I've now made. All right, number five. This is controversial. I may get some pushback on this one, but a mistake I see is spending more than 20 minutes on creating a digital assignment or activity. And I know we spend a lot of time making assignments and activities for our students and we want them to be really awesome. But if you're finding when using a specific digital tool, it's taking you more than 20 minutes to create a new assignment every time you use it, it's just not sustainable for every single assignment. We wanna find those unicorn tools. I like to call these done for you tools. These are tools like Edpuzzle, Kahoot, Quizlet, Look it or Khan Academy. The work is already done. Somebody else has already ed puzzled a video or created a flashcard set of your exact topic. And that teacher has allowed other teachers to use their work. So we're going to use it. It's okay to give a few lessons here and there a little more of your time, but certainly seek out those done for you tools. I'm saying no to you spending more than 20 minutes digitizing any given assignment or activity. All right, that's a little controversial, so throw your hate in the comments. No, I'm just kidding. Don't, don't throw your hate in the comments. Uh, don't hate it until you try it. I'm just really trying to protect your time and not giving it all away to creating original digital content that may be already created or isn't even digitally needed or maybe you do need a custom assignment, but the tool you are using takes up too much time to create with. Anyway, protecting your time does not mean that the lesson will be of lesser quality. I just encourage you to find those tools that are user friendly and have done for you content because they are out there. They are free. A lot of them, they are out there for sure. So those are the five mistakes you can now avoid. I hope I've saved you some headache of using technology in your classroom. In the next video, I'll share the five mistakes that schools make when integrating technology school-wide. We zoom up a little bit higher to look at the whole school and what mistakes a school can avoid when integrating technology. Make sure to get subscribed to the Integrated Teacher YouTube channel and click that bell so you get notified of new content and never miss a video.